trust. It's the thing that greases the wheels of civilization. If someone gives you a dollar, you trust that it's not a forgery, that a store will take it, a bank will honor it, the Treasury Department will guarantee its worth. If you vote, you trust that your vote will be counted, or at least you used to. Buy an apple labeled organic, you trust that it will not be covered in pesticides. Try to think of any transaction, any interaction that doesn't require some level of trust. It's not easy. But the world is full of counterfeit bills and organic apples that are not remotely organic. And as we learned so brutally in 2007 and 2008, the world is also full of banks that are corrupt, banks that can fail, banks that can take your trust and your money with them. It's no coincidence that the blockchain concept appeared shortly after the financial crash. In late 2008, a shadowy figure named Satoshi Nakamoto published a paper outlining how to get rid of the old trust system and replace it with a sort of trustless trust. White paper in 2008 introduced Bitcoin, and Bitcoin was this concept of a decentralized ledger um, with a clear kind of financial currency focus. It's in a distributed ledger, and because of that distribution, no one person is in control of that record and doesn't have the opportunity to manipulate it. And it was this system that created sort of a virtual currency. In Blockchain is the technology that sort of underpins that. To this day, no one knows who Nakamoto is, or even if he or she is just one person. But the blockchain idea proved to be a powerful one. And it works like this. A block is simply a chunk of information, a record of something, like how much money you have. When it comes to money, that record is called a ledger. Let's say you have four coins. If something happens to change that record or ledger, maybe you buy something that costs one coin. A new block is formed and linked to the first one. And the first one is locked. And so on and so forth as you earn or spend more coins. The blocks can't be opened and the links can't be broken because they're codes that are incredibly difficult to break. So that keeps the information safe, trustworthy, you might say. But a blockchain includes yet another level of safekeeping. Instead of being tracked in one central place, like a bank, identical copies of the blockchain are stored on thousands or millions of independent computers, all of which can talk to each other. It's called a decentralized network. And with each new block, the chain is updated in every single computer on the network. In Money Matters, this is referred to as a distributed ledger. Now, if someone wants to monkey with the information in the blockchain, they not only have to break these nearly impossible codes, they have to figure out a way to change the information in every computer in the network, almost instantaneously. So, where a bad bank employee could wreak havoc with your account, he or she couldn't tamper with your blockchain. The distributed ledger is theoretically both secure and transparent because everyone can see it and presumably send out cyber howls of protest if anything unkosher is happening. Now you have hundreds or thousands or even millions of copies of that record and as transactions are occurring, the updates are happening across all those copies. So I can't, for instance, dispute a, a record because that exchange was recorded in thousands of places. Simple, right? Uh, not for most of us. Even blockchain enthusiasts occasionally admit that they don't fully grasp it either. Fortunately, and rather amazingly, these giant stones on the tiny Pacific island of Yap can help us understand how blockchain and cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin work. <laughs>